In this presentation, I'm going to use R to look at Markov chains, to analyze Markov chains using the Markov chain R package. This presentation is aimed at finance students, actuarial students, and mathematical science students, okay? There are other ways of doing it using other programming languages, but they are probably required to use R for this sort of problem. Also, what we're going to do is use Jupyter Notebooks, but because of something that I'll demonstrate later on, installation problems, I'll also switch to base R, the R default console. I could use RStudio, but I think RStudio just gets a little bit cluttered looking when you try to make a screencast. But if you're working at home with RStudio, that's fine, if you can just follow what's going on, what I'm doing. So, data is available for the movement of taxis in Dublin. The city is divided into three zones, north, south and west, and the east being Dublin Bay, which is the sea. So, the movement of a taxi from one zone to the other will depend only on its current position. So here we have the three sort of, what happens in each of the three zones. So we have the northern zone. Of all taxis in the northern zone, 30% will remain in the north, 30% will move to the south, and the remaining 40% will go to the west. In the southern zone, taxis have a 40% chance of moving to the north, 40% chance of staying in the south, and 20% chance of moving to the west. And finally, of all the taxis in the western zone, the west, 50% will move to the north, 30% will move to the south, and the remaining 20% will stay in the west. So what we're going to do is model this Markov chain using R. Okay, so this is a, ha, the movements of the taxis described in a transition diagram, which we would usually denote P. So this is essentially a statement, a mathematical statement of what I've just discussed there previously. Okay, now, so we'll get into the questions here shortly, or we'll actually get into the exercises now. Uh, this is Jupyter Notebooks. It's great for most things, except something we'll see later on. But essentially what we want to do here is create a vector of the state spaces in R, which in this case is north, south, east, and west. And it should pop up here. So essentially what we should see, should see is something come out here. So essentially this is the key thing here. I'm going to call it driver zone, okay? It just creates a little vector there of the three states, okay, north, south, and west. And when I write press driver zone here, when I run that, it just pops up. I'll just show you what I mean here with, up at the top here, I have the run button. And if I just press that each time I want to run a cell, like a cell like this, it just runs the output. Okay, so it just runs there. And that's it there. It's just printed out now, north, south, and west. So essentially, driver zone is created now in our environment. So we'll move on to the second exercise. Construct a transition matrix of the zone movement probabilities. Okay, so essentially what we have to do is sort of set up a matrix here. The first thing we need to know is actually how to just set up a matrix. Okay, so the command here is matrix. And essentially what we have here is a little vector of all the values that we're going to put into our, our matrix. Also, what we have to do is specify the dimensions of the matrix. Now, n row means number of rows. It all, uh, uh, R can already see that there are nine entries here, okay? So when you specify number of rows, it will sort of say, ah, oh, yeah, three. So that if there's nine, it's a three by three matrix. You could put in number of columns, n call, and it will just sort of determine what the dimensions should be. So everything should be consistent. If they're not consistent, for example, you've put in n row equal four there, you get an error. Now, this is something you also have to do. Okay, you have to specify how they go in. The default setting is that they go in the first column, the second column, the third column, and so on. So what you have to do additionally is just actually specify by, specify by row. So this will actually sort of go in as the first row, okay, second row, and third row. So first row, middle row, bottom row. If you don't put that in, this will go in as the first column, okay? Second column and third column, which is not what you want in this case. The, each row has to add up to one. Okay, so let's just run that and see how that comes out. There we go, that looks good. That's at the transition matrix we want. So there is ways to fix it here, but I won't get too much into uh, manipulating matrices just yet. There's a, quite a lot of uh, little ins and outs of uh, working with matrices in R. They are quite useful. What we're also going to do here is I'm going to take it one step further, and I'm going to just press run here, because what I'm going also to do is add in the dimensions of the, the name of the dimensions, which is north, south, and e, uh, west, the, sta the state spaces. 
So essentially, this is here that just essentially added in a little bit extra there, just to come up with a very clear and definitive uh, zone transition matrix there. Okay. So that's the second exercise. Now the third exercise is going to require a little bit of work. Okay. So the exercise three: load the R package for Markov chains, and just remark that R is case sensitive. Now this is an important consideration for me and what I'm, how I'm presenting this video, and you might sort of demonstrate this might be demonstrated very quickly. So essentially, what I'm going to do here is see if I can install it. And I'm, I'm going to sort of save a little bit of time here and just sort of not try to install it just to get an error. But currently, the version of R I'm working with is 3.5.3. Now, what I need, so if I was to run this, this is how I should install it, okay? Install that packages Markov chain with, in brackets and quotation marks, and then to run the package, it would just type in library Markov chain. Now, the thing is that I require version 3.6 for R, and that actually is hard to do it's hard to get this these online notebooks to update regularly so uh, what I'm going to do is actually switch over to base R which is running on my own computer okay so I have it done there perfect and so we're ready to go so essentially I already wrote in install.packages R I let it run for a while and then I just pressed in library or typed in library Markov chain so it's ready to go now so it'd be great if I could do that in the notebook, the uh, Jupyter Notebook, but we can't have it all our own way. So create a Markov chain object with state space equal to your vector in exercise one and the transition matrix from exercise two. So essentially what we need here is we need our state space, which is north, south and east or north, south and west. OK, so that little vector there and also our matrix here zone transitions which we used previously okay so i'm going to sort of set all these up in the base r installation so i just pause for a minute there just to sort of put everything into base base r installation there so we have driver zone it's imported there and if i press driver zone it comes up with north south and west and i have zone transition there so all the building blocks are in there and we're ready to go so th th that's just sort of setting up a vector in a matrix. That's just the basic input. So this is the key part here. This is the Markov chain part of this. So I'm just going to press Control L to clear the screen. There we go. So this is a Markov chain object here. Okay. So that's great. That's everything we need. A three-dimensional discrete Markov chain defined by the following states, north, south, and west. All of the information is there. Now, this is a very interesting thing you can do when you get good at this is to type in things like MC zone so you can sort of inspect the objects. Oops, that's my typing is there, not there. So what does that do? Yeah, just to show that it's a Markov chain. It's just tells you what type of object it is. Okay, Markov chain. That was just a sort of minor little thing. You can try that out for uh, uh, zone transition and driver movement as well. Or, okay. So that is exercise four taken care of. Now, again, I can't run that in Jupyter Notebooks because it is just not ready. Can't do it. So essentially what we're going to do is calculate the probability that the driver in the north zone will be in the north zone after two trips and three trips. Okay. So what I could do here is actually use some matrix multiplications here. So I'll just sort of come back to this later on. This stuff is not so important. So I'll actually ask, answer the main questions first and then just actually go back to matrices. So what I have to do here is actually, I can just square it, okay? So I have, let's go up here, MC zone and just put in square it. Very simple, straightforward squaring operation now it recognizes that the mc zone is a just specifically a matrix and not an array okay so that's very important when you're sort of dealing with matrices when you try to multiply them i'll actually come back come to that shortly if you're not using this package and anyway, the question is what is the probability of a driver in the northern zones being in the northern zone after two phases and it is 0 0.41 and Let's try for three phases. 
so after three phases it is 0 0.385 okay so it, this can continue on in ad infinitum so for example nine phases things start to settle down okay you can sort of see that you know after a while we start to approach steady state probability so this is a steady state vector of probabilities okay which is a sort of key question here so let's just go back to our exercise okay sorry just actually the question is the required probability in two trips is 41 percent and the required probability in three trips three trips is 0 0.385 the last part is determine the stationary the stationary state of the markov chain the steady states essentially okay so that's essentially this is it steady states there we go and it just gives you a vector of the steady state probabilities so i think for this presentation we'll leave it there i'll do a little follow-up where i look at some of the other approaches if you're not using the markov chain package for various reasons and installing our packages could be a bit of a pain so essentially how you would do it if you were actually just doing it from the, the basis of linear algebra only which is actually quite interesting as well it's interesting to pop the hood but we'll leave it there for now